So in this video, I wanted to go over how to draw partial cylinders on isometric paper. And let's start with this half cylinder right here. And so I'm going to go ahead and start this point right here. And I'm going to draw to the right first. It says it goes 1.5 or 6 squares. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6. Now, I also know that this semicircle has a radius of 0.75 or 3. And so if I were to sketch myself a center mark right in the center of this line that I sketched for myself... I would recognize that if I go to the left, one, two, three, that would be a radius of three. If I were to go up, one, two, three, that would be a radius of three as well. And if I go to the right, one, two, three, that would be the radius of three as well. And so I've already drawn my straight lines that make my semicircle. We only need to draw these two ends of our curves. We only need to draw these two ends of our curve. And so we just need to look and say, okay, where these two lines intersect, the question is, is this an acute angle or an obtuse angle? And you can see very clearly that that is an acute angle. And so that means my curve will become very, very sharp. And so as I leave these straight lines, I want to make sure that I'm curving very, very sharply. And then over here at these two straight lines, you can see that that creates a very obtuse angle. And so that means as I leave these two straight lines, it's going to be an almost straight curve. And so I've already drawn the front of my face, so what about the back? Well, from this corner, it goes back one, two, three, four squares, because one is four squares on isometric paper. And before I start sketching this curve, let's think about it for a second. Where will be the center of this curve? Well, the center of this back curve would be four behind the center of the front curve. And so if I take this center and go back one, two, three, four, and I draw myself a new center mark, that should be three away from this edge that I just created for myself. And so I can draw my first straight line. And then I can go up one, two, three, and I can draw my second straight line. And if I drew it correctly, it should be four behind this top straight line that I drew before on the front face. One, two, three, four. And so we did pretty good. And if I go to the left, one, two, three, I can draw this part to my curve as well. And that is also one, two, three, four squares behind the straight edge that I drew for myself from my front face. Now, you'll notice that we can't actually see the end of this curve. And so I'm going to go ahead and connect these two, but I'm going to connect them with a construction line. And I recognize that this is a very acute angle where these two lines intersect. So I'm going to draw it super light, but I am going to sketch it because I do need it. Now on this end, I can see this entire curve. And so I'm going to go ahead and just connect it with an object line or darker lines because I don't plan on erasing it. I will keep this. But again, I recognize this is a very obtuse angle, and so this should be an almost straight curve. Now, over here, at some point, it stops being a curve and starts being a straight line. So the question is, when does it stop being a curve and become a straight line? And the answer is the direction the circle is going. And so this circle is going in the depth direction. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my straight edge and I'm going to make it parallel to my depth lines. And while it's parallel to my depth lines, I'm going to also connect it to my two curves to create what's called the tangent. I'm going to sketch it back until it connects with both. And at this point, this intersection of my curve and my tangent Everything in front of that is an object line that's part of my curve. Everything behind it is construction line, which we don't really need. It was just there to help us construct the shape. And now we're done with this half cylinder. I now want to go ahead and give this arch bridge sort of shape a try here with this semicircle cut out of it. And so let's go ahead, let's move this over and... I want to start I want to start this bottom corner here towards the bottom of my page to make sure I have plenty of room to sketch the entire thing. And what do I know? Well, I know it goes back and to the left 1, which is 4 squares, so 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
Okay, and what else do I know? Well, I know it goes up five squares, and so we go up one, two, three, four, and five. And then I can go ahead and finish off this face, one, two, three, four, five, and then connect these two by four. If I did it right, it should all connect nice and neat because math. Okay, from this point right here, I know that it goes forward 0.5 or two squares. And so I will go forward two squares. And at that point is where my arc starts. And so I'm going to go ahead and start that arc, but I'm not going to finish it just yet. I'm going to instead go up here and sketch this top face that we can see. And it says it's 2.5, which is 10 squares. 2 is 8. 0.5 is 2. 8 plus 2 is 10. And so I will go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then I will go to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4. And if I did it right, this should connect by 10 as well. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then I know at the back, the height is still five tall. It hasn't stopped being five tall just because we're at the back of the shape. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then what else do I know? Well, I know it goes inward, but I don't know quite how much. And so we kind of have to figure that out. And so let's start looking at this circle. Well, it says the circle has a radius of 0.75, which is, of course, three squares. And so from this point, if we go to the right one, two, three, we should have our center mark. Okay, so we go to the right one, two, three, and we can draw our center mark. And this center mark should be going in our depth direction, meaning it has a height and a depth. And then if I leave this uh, center mark to the right three more times, one, two, three, I know that that should be the end of my circle. And so that's how I know how wide this is. This has to be two as well so that my circle can have a distance of three in each direction. And then from the center point, I also need to go up three, so one, two, three. And so now I have my three straight lines to help me sketch my curve. And then I'm just going to look at these two lines and see where they would intersect and they'll intersect right here. That is a very obtuse angle. And so as these two connect, I'm going to connect them with a almost straight curve. And I can't stress this enough. I'm not looking for your ability to draw a perfect circle. I'm looking for you to recognize where the center point is and the elongation direction of your circle. And so to figure out where it elongates where it foreshortens or gets longer, you need to look at your angles. And you can see where these two lines intersect. It's a very acute angle. And so that means that this is going to be a very sharp curve. And so as I leave this edge, I'm going to let it curve very, very sharply. And you can see it just sort of looks like a more natural curve than if I just drew a random circle and hoped that it was correct and so what do we have left? Well, the only thing I'm missing is this straight edge right here. This is the width of the bottom of our circle, and it just goes to the left. It should go four squares or a distance of one, but we can't see the entire thing. So I'm just going to sketch it into my curve until I run out of room, and I am done with this next cylinder shape.